Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I'm the owner of The Aesthetic Dollar. In today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through the A5 binder and showing you how to set up a zero-based budget. All right, you guys, let's dive into this video. This has been a highly requested video from so many of you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the A5 budget binder that's available on my shop, theaestheticdollar.com. I'll also link that in the description so you can check it out. So this does come in a digital download version and a pre-printed version. So before we jump in, there's a couple things that I want to say about making a budget. Some people get all cringy at the thought of a written budget, but hear me out. A budget is not meant to restrict you it's actually meant to give you freedom and you are going to feel so much less guilt while spending if you know that you've budgeted the money for it so i always recommend a zero-based budget and a zero-based budget just means that you give every dollar a job before it hits your bank account so if you're new to budgeting i recommend going through your bank account and writing down how much your bills are how much you normally spend on variable expenses like groceries gas etc and then where else you're spending your money so when my husband and i first did that we were sick to our stomach because we realized why we never felt like we had any money because it's not like frivolously spending money on big things it's all of the little things that accumulate throughout the month so highly recommend that you go through your bank account with different colored highlighters and make different categories for what you're spending your money on so your fixed expenses your variable expenses etc okay so let's really quick talk about those terms i just said fixed expenses are like your bills or things that are the same every single month. So that would be like your rent, your car payment, phone bill, subscriptions, and things like that. Those are fixed expenses. Variable expenses are things that are different month to month. So things that you could budget for groceries or gas or pet care or clothing, target runs, going to Starbucks, things like that. Those are variable expenses, things that are different every single month. Another term that you hear often in the budgeting world is sinking funds. And sinking funds are things that you would save up for gradually over a period of time. People use sinking funds for different things. And I like to use categories for things that either A, I tend to overspend on, you know what I mean? Like you get paid and you feel like you have a bunch of money to spend without thinking about the fact that maybe your car needs an oil change or it's time to buy school supplies for your kids or whatever. A couple things that tend to always sneak up on me every year is back to school and my annual memberships. And so I choose to cash stuff my back to school envelope and annual memberships so that when the time comes, I have the cash for those things. And it's not a surprise when those bigger amounts of money come out of my bank account. Other examples of sinking funds would be car maintenance, Christmas, household needs, gifts, etc. And then the fourth common category category for budgeting is savings challenges and savings challenges basically just make saving fun, especially for people who aren't natural savers or don't find a lot of joy in saving. They would rather spend like me, um, but it motivates you to set money aside for budgeting and for saving. So I love savings challenges. I'll talk more about that maybe in another video, but those are the four categories. So we've got fixed expenses, variable expenses, sinking funds, and savings challenges. So let's dive into the budget binder here. And this is the budget binder as it comes on my website. So you can get it with an A5 binder if you don't have one, or if you already have one, you can just get the pages. All right. I'm like really trying to make sure I have this like in the camera so you guys can see it. All right. So this is the very basic A5 binder and I made it very minimalistic so that you can add your own aesthetic and your own flair to it. So I'll show you mine. So this is my personal A5 and I chose to do some layering and these sheets are from cloth and paper, which I can also link their website in the description. But I like to just have like this beautiful aesthetic with my budget binder. And then, you know, I have all my budgeting sheets behind that. So that's my personal a5 budget binder i highly recommend that you do the same thing like add your own flair to your budget binder so like i said this comes in a digital download or you can get a binder bundle with the a5 binder and the pages or you can get just the pages so i'm going to kind of give you a little tour of the binder and then we're going to walk through how to set up a zero based budget and how to do your monthly cash stuffing routine using this budget binder so the first page in here is an at a glance for 2023 so it has all 12 months of the year the next page in here is the financial overview page, which has every single month and you can track your total household income, what your total expenses were, and then how much you put away for savings can be tracked here. And then I like to track what my current debt 
balance is right here. Next up is our cover pages. And so there are 12 cover pages because there are 12 sets of the zero based budgeting sheets in this binder. Everything is undated so that you can start anytime during the year. Each section is divided up by one of these cover pages and there's different quotes on each page. So this one says, never spend your money before you've earned it. And that was a quote by Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so then we move into the actual pages. And so the first page here is the weekly wallet tracker so that you can track the cash in your wallet. And there are four sections for four weeks. And then it does come also with an extra one of these sheets front and back for extra weeks during the month, because sometimes you have a magic month, which is when you get paid extra in a month because of where the days land. So for example, if you're someone who's paid weekly and there's five Fridays that month and you get paid five times instead of four times, that's what the extra sheets are for. And that's what a magic month is. All right, next we have the zero-based budgeting sheets where you can track your monthly income, your monthly bills, which like I said, is like your fixed expenses. So the things that are pretty much the same every single month, your rent, your car payment, your phone bill, subscriptions, et cetera, and then tracking debt payoff. So you can track the category. So who you owe money to, your current balances, your payment. And then I like to put this little check mark option right here because it feels so good when you can check that off after you've paid it and then what your new balance is. So then at the end of the month, you can easily come here and add up what the balances are for your debts and then just transfer that number into your debt tracker. Okay, next up is the sinking funds pages. And so these are like your variable expenses slash sinking funds. This is what I personally use to track how much I'm gonna budget for each category. And we'll come back to this in a little bit, but there are plenty of lines so that you can track. And I'm gonna show you how you can use these two things if you're paid weekly, bi-weekly, or once a month. And then there's also a tracker for savings challenges. So if you're doing multiple savings challenges, you have multiple lines to write down how much you're gonna put into your savings challenge from your zero-based budget. And then next we have the cash planning pages with lots of lines so that you can track which denominations you want to take from the bank. Then next we have the cash planning, the cash pan, oh my God. Next is the cash planning pages. And this is where you can write down how much cash you wanna take out of the bank and which denominations for each of your categories for cash stuffing. And I'm gonna walk you through these pages here in just a minute. And then last but not least is the online spending tracker. So you can track any purchases you've made with your credit card or your debit card so that you can unstuff your cash envelopes and put that money back into the bank. And then a new section starts after that. So there are 12 of these sections. So let's start by putting together our zero based budget. Okay, so like I said, I recommend a zero-based budget, which just means that you're giving every dollar a job before it hits your bank account so that there's no money just hanging out. And here's what I'll say about budgets too, is that every single person's budget is different because it's going to depend on your lifestyle, where you live, what your values are. And so this is just an example of how to fill out a zero-based budget. Your numbers are gonna look totally different. Your categories are gonna look totally different. This is just an example to give you an idea of how you can create your own zero-based budget. So let's review the steps first. Number one, go through your bank account and look through all of the transactions and categorize them into what your bills are and what you're spending on your variable expenses throughout the month to give you an idea of how to create your budget. It may also give you an idea of how you can gain control of the areas that might be out of control. So, all right, for this particular example, I'm gonna do a bi-weekly paid budget. So this is someone who is paid two times a month or every other week. And I'll also explain how you can use this tracking system if you're paid monthly or weekly. So let's start by writing in the income. You always want to start with that. And this is your greatest tool. Like your income is your greatest wealth building tool because the more income you have, the more debt you can pay off. So if you're finding that you have more month than you have money, you might need to find a way to just bring in some extra income. And there's a million ways to do that nowadays. So let's start with paycheck number one and paycheck number two. This budget, this person gets paid $4,000 take home pay. And obviously I'm doing very rounded numbers for this example, just to save time, but you know. So I always start with the income. And then the first thing that I do for my budget is my bills and my fixed expenses, because those are things that I 
need to pay for. I wanna make sure that my family is taken care of. So I focus on our four walls first, which would be the rent, the utilities and things like that. So let's start with rent. This could also, you know, be your mortgage and rent is $1,000. Utilities is next. Utilities could also be a variable expense because I know for us, like our utility bills are different every month depending on what time of year it is because we live in Minnesota. So, you know, in the summer, our electric bill is a lot higher because we run our AC. And then in the winter, our gas bill is higher because we're running our furnace. And so things kind of switch, but I still put this into this category because it counts as my four walls and it is a bill. So I put that up here. So let's say it total your utilities are $120. Next up, let's do phone. I think everyone has a phone. Phone is $80. Next, let's do subscriptions. And subscriptions for the month are $80. And so I would categorize subscriptions as, and you can make this as like exact as you want to, or just do blanket categories. So subscriptions could include apps on your phone. It can include streaming services, anything like that. And then the last one I'll do for this example is insurance. So $120 for insurance. So let's add up the bills. So $1,400 for the monthly bills. And when I'm writing up my zero-based budget, I like to do my budget for the whole month because I'm paid monthly. And if you have a really fixed income like this, you could just do it for the whole month at the beginning of the month. If your income is really all over the place and it's different, you could do this with every paycheck. This budget binder comes with just one of these sheets, but you could also use multiples if you needed to and turn it into like a six month budget binder. It's totally up to you. But the budget binder is laid out for the year, but it's not dated. So you can use however many pages you need for a particular pay period. So $1,400, so let's do 4,000. So you can see what we're working with here, minus 1,400 is 2600 so next is debt payoff and this could i'm gonna, the first one is going to be car payment this could go in monthly bills and then i'm going to do an example for a credit card too that could also go on monthly bills but this is on the same page and since i like to track my debt separately i'm going to put that down here it's still a bill that needs to get paid so let's do car payment and the current balance on this car is six thousand two hundred and eighty dollars the monthly payment is 190 and then this credit card has $1,412 on it and the monthly payment is 82. Okay, so now we have our debt payments. So 190. So now we have $2,328 left to budget. And since I'm right-handed, I like to take this out when I write so that it's hard for me to write with this ring thing here. All right, so next let's budget out our variable expenses. And um, I also refer to these as sinking funds. These can be things you cashed up or things you don't. It's totally up to you. The first one that we'll do is groceries. And then let's do gas. All right, so I have groceries, gas, clothing, spending, eating out, entertainment, pet care, household hygiene, and vehicle maintenance. You might have a million more categories than this, or this amount might seem overwhelming to you. Just do what's best for you. But since we're making a zero-based budget, you do want to budget out every single dollar into any type of category. Even if that means most of it is going to savings, you still want to give it that job. All right, so since this is going to be for the entire month, we're going to budget $600 for groceries. Okay, so here's where I'm going to explain something. If you are someone who is paid bi-weekly or weekly, what I recommend doing at this point when it comes to cash stuffing is dividing these numbers into however many weeks you're going to be cash stuffing based off your paycheck. So if you are somebody who is paid twice a month or bi-weekly, then you would cash stuff $300 per paycheck from this. If you're somebody who's paid weekly, then you would cash stuff $150 per week on groceries and so on and so forth. The things that don't divide perfectly into four, like 70, what I do is I'm someone who's paid monthly, but I cash stuff weekly. And so I would divide this 70 into 20, 20, 20, and 10. And those are the denominations that I would cash stuff so that I have my full 70. So that's how I would utilize this if you're somebody who's paid weekly or bi-weekly. So now that we have our sinking funds budgeted for, and we do, you do have 
a lot of lines for sinking funds if you're somebody who likes to have everything really separated out like that. I'm like that. I have a lot of different categories. All right, and then savings challenges. So for savings challenges, we are doing a Christmas savings challenge, 52 week savings challenge, and we are also funding our emergency fund. So we are gonna throw $200 from Christmas, we're gonna do $100 for our 52 week savings challenge. So that would be $25 a week and then $100 towards our emergency fund. And same thing with this. If you're someone who's paid bi-weekly, you're gonna cash stuff $100 per paycheck for Christmas, $50 per paycheck for this savings challenge and then 50 bucks a paycheck for the emergency fund savings. So let's catch up here with where we are at with our zero-based budget. So $600 for groceries, so that leaves $478 left in our budget. So with a zero-based budget, you're gonna find a job for this money. So you might be someone who's like got leftover money at the end of your budget, or you're someone who's like, I don't have enough money in my budget. So when you don't have enough, that's when you're gonna start going through things and adjusting your budget. So for example, if you are $100 over on your budget, you might take 50 bucks out of entertainment, 20 out of eating out and 30 out of spending so that you can have that zero based budget. When you have leftover money, what I recommend doing is if you have debt to pay off, I would throw that extra money towards your debt and get those balances paid down. So that's what I would do with that. So let's say in this example, if you're new to making a budget, I would maybe use a pencil on this. <laughs> So you can erase if you need to. So for here, you could decide, okay, well, I want to get this credit card paid off. So I'm going to throw the entire $478 at this credit card. So instead of paying just 82 down on it, I'm actually going to pay 560 down on it. You did that. Your new balance for your credit card would be $852. Let's say that you just paid that. So then you can mark that off. And oh my gosh, the serotonin that produces is so nice. And same thing. And then when you pay off your car payment, you can check that off too. All right. So now that we have our zero based budget, you're going to come to our cash planning pages. And I'm just going to write on this page because I'm right-handed and that's what I want to do. So for cash planning, write down your categories again. So you might not cash stuff every single one of these categories. So you might decide that you don't want to cash stuff gas because you always pay at the pump. So so then you would leave that one out. I'm gonna go ahead and write these categories down and the amounts, and then I will show you how to do this part. All right, so now I have all of my totals written down on my cash planning sheet, and now I'm gonna go through and decide which denominations I want for each of the categories. Hold this up so you can see it a little better. Um, so whether you want $100 bills, 50s, 20s, 10s, 5s, or 1s. And then I like to do this check mark here when I get my cash from the bank, then I'm going through and double checking everything. This is also gonna be personal preference. And so if you're somebody who likes to carry bigger bills, you can do that. Or if you're someone who likes to have the option of having smaller bills, that works too. So I like to just condense my bills as much as I can, which is what I'm gonna do in this example. So for groceries, I like to divide that up into 50s because I feel like 100s is a little excessive. So I'm gonna do 12 50s. Okay, so then for gas, I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have a lot of 50s for these first two. So I'm gonna do four 50s for gas. For clothing, I think I'm gonna do, let's do five 20s for clothing. And for spending, let's do four 20s and two 10s. Eating out, we're gonna do four 20s. For entertainment, we're going to do two 20s, four 10s, which would bring us to 80. And then we're gonna do four fives, which would bring us to 100. For pet care, we're gonna do two 20s. Household, we're gonna do two 20s, four 10s. Hygiene, we're gonna do the same thing. Christmas, this is a savings challenge, so I like to condense that as much as I can. So we are gonna do two 100s, same thing for emergency and our 52 week challenge. And then vehicle maintenance out of order from up here. But so vehicle maintenance, we're gonna do, if you're somebody who's cash stuffing, again, if you're someone who's cash stuffing weekly, you could do three 20s and a 10. All right, so then we're gonna go through, I don't really mess with ones, but if you do, then just add them in here. So we're gonna go through and add these up. So for $5 bills, we have four. For tens, we have two, six, 10, 14, 15. Twenties, we have five. I need my calculator for this, you guys. 
All right, hopefully that's right. 24, we'll find out. 50s, we have 16 50s, and then four $100 bills. So total for the month, we're gonna add these all up here. So 1,850 for the month. All right, so then the next step is to go to the bank and get your cash. And that's where these teller slips come in. So these are sticky notes. They come in 25 sheets per pack. So what you're gonna do is fill out this teller slip and this is what you will give to the teller at the bank so that they can get you the correct denominations. And so you're just gonna transfer this information onto the teller slip. So for the 100s, we have four of them. So we're gonna write four. For the 50s, we have 16. For the 20s, we have 24 of them. 10s, we have 15. Fives, we have four. And then we don't have any ones. So then you're gonna go through and write the amount. So $400. Then you will just bring this to the bank. I like to just stick it right on my sheet here. So then when you're ready to go to the bank or you can put it in your wallet, whatever is easier for you. These are available on my shop as well. So I will link this in the description. All right. And then the last thing that I will show you guys is the online spending tracker. And this is for people who use a credit card or a debit card to buy something online. Or if you were at the store and ended up using your debit card because you didn't have your cash envelopes with you or whatever. That is what this is for. This is the online spending tracker. So we're gonna just do two examples for this one so I can show you the process for how to do it. First, we're gonna write in the date and I have a budgeting app that I track. It's called Every Dollar. I have a, a video on it and I will link it in the description, but that's how I keep track of debit card purchases. Um, so on April 10th, I purchased a shirt off Amazon. So that's gonna come out of my clothing category and I spent $20 on it. And I usually just round up for this because it's easier to take the cash out when you have round numbers. So if it was $20 and 55 cents, I'll round up to $21. So then on um, the next day I was at Target and I used my Target debit card to purchase some cleaning products because I get that 5% savings. That is gonna come out of cleaning or technically I could write household there. The amount was $14. So then what I would do at this point, grab my cash envelope system. I would flip through. So the first one is clothing. So I would find my clothing envelope and I would pull $20 out of my clothing envelope to deposit back into the bank. I'm gonna put this back in here so I don't forget. And then I would do the same thing for my household as well. So I would take this and I would grab $14 out of here. So if you want to see more about this process, I do have another video on how I do this. I call it my cash on stuffing where once or twice a month I go through and I unstuff everything out of my sinking fund binders that I used my card for. And I, people ask me this question a lot too. If I use a credit card or if I have a buffer in my bank account, I have a buffer in my bank account. I don't use credit cards. I can't be trusted with them. So we keep a buffer in our checking account for online purchases and things like that. So the money that I pull out of my sinking funds binders to put back in the bank is replenishing that buffer. So that's how the online spending sheet works. And like I said, a lot of lines and a lot of space for you to be able to write things and to just make it your own. So the last thing that I'll talk about is this weekly wallet tracker and everybody does this a little bit differently. Some people have specific categories for their wallet. And if you do, I would just write those on your sinking funds for your zero based budget. All of the cash envelopes that I have in my wallet are things that are pretty much all duplicates of my sinking funds. It's just so that I don't have to bring this big binder with me every time I go somewhere. I just have my wallet with my cash envelopes and I pull out of my sinking funds binders when I want to go shopping. So you would just write down the category, how much your cash stuffing for that week, and then at the end of the week, how much you spent and what you have remaining. You can decide if you wanna roll that money over to the next week or if you wanna put it in a savings challenge and then just do the same thing the next week. And like I said, there's an extra one of these sheets. So there's actually 13 of these that come in the binder to cover the months that have an extra week. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope this video was helpful. Just remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I just like to share my journey. But if you do have more questions, definitely leave them down in the comments and I'll go through and try to answer them the best I can. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you in my next video.